Okay, well, welcome to episode seven of the Wombs of Glory podcast. I am joined by Paige today, and I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this all day, so mm. I am so excited to sit down with you. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Can't wait to see where this goes. Yeah, me too. I'm so excited. Um, well, I'll just open us in prayer and then we'll get started. So Wonderful. Father, we just come before you and we thank you so much again. I say this every week, but I'm just, it's such an honor to be able to create community and to be able to create community with people who don't even live in the same country and continent yeah. and all that kind of fun stuff. And I just thank you for blessing so many amazing women who get to come on and talk to me and inspire me and share just the goodness of your glory. And so we just ask that you just come and we just prepare our hearts to be able to share our stories. So mm. amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, well, why don't you go ahead and just kind of introduce who you are. You can tell us about your family, just anything. Yeah. Okay, fun. Um, my name is Paige Geidel. I live in California and I am almost 24 years old. My birthday is in like three weeks. Um, <laughs> I have been married to my husband, John, for four and a half years. Got married when I was 19 and we're from the same small town in Kansas, um, living in California now, just recently in the last year relocated for his job. And we have two daughters. Flora is three. Juliet is um, 19 months. And then I am actually like 19 weeks pregnant with our third baby. We're having a boy this fall, which is so fun. So he's oh, due that's so exciting. <laughs> um, like the very end of September. So Aww, that's so exciting. Yeah. Well, thank congratulations you. and happy birthday. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Lots going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, you also have a podcast, which is how I found you. Um, yeah. I've been listening to your podcast for, um, a couple of years. And, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So you can go ahead and tell us kind of what your podcast is about. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun. Um, I just, I'm still just blown away that people like find it, listen to it because it feels in some ways so scrapped together, but that's, <laughs> I guess just goes to show like the Holy Spirit doing its thing, you know? Um, yeah, I host a podcast called Love in a Cottage and it's for creative Christian women kind of chatting about marriage, motherhood, homemaking, and following Jesus and lots of things in between. I used to say it was for women in their 20s, which I guess that is definitely true. Um, but it's been amazing to hear how like women from late teens to like mid or later 30s are like resonating with things. And so mm -hmm. I try to be like a little bit more inclusive. But I guess it's just when I started, I was like, I'm in my 20s mm -hmm. and um, really just wanted to hear other women's stories, share other women's stories and um, create a community of women who were interested in the same things or maybe like in a season of life where they didn't necessarily have friends like in person or a community mm -hmm. in person in the same season of life um, where they could feel like seen and inspired and um, understood. So mm -hmm. yeah, we've been on a bit of a break just because we made this move to California and I've kind of just been trying to like find my footing, stay at home mom, like kind of lost my whole support system um, in moving away from family. But hopefully it will be returning the end of this month because I have some episodes ready to go. So yeah, I can't wait to listen to it when it comes back. I we're in the height of gardening season right now, and I always that's my podcast season. So yes, yeah, I'll, I'll watch for those new episodes. Oh, fun! Um, yeah, it's really cool because I was just on Instagram and I had recorded, I think, just a couple with some people, a couple podcasts with people that I knew, and then I was like, oh man, just like God, just like reveal, you know someone to come on and it was you your story like literally came up right as I went on Instagram and oh I had not seen I follow you I think I follow your personal one and your podcast one but then I have multiple accounts so I'm yeah. like sometimes people get lost and then yeah there you were so I thought it was so cool and it's your podcast is just about women and we're relatively the same age I'll be 23 at the end of the year 
Okay. Cool. Um, and yeah, I also got married when I was 19. So I it was just it. like, it felt like just such a cool God thing that you showed up on my Instagram. And then I reached out and you were like, oh my gosh, I'm like on my phone right now. <laughs> and so you replied yes. like right away, <laughs> which is so yes. cool. Yes, which almost never happens. And I just feel like I haven't been on Instagram much at all either. So mm-hmm. That's so funny that I even like posted a story because I'm like, I feel like I barely post these days, but (laughs) yeah, yeah, the Lord just orchestrated it all. Yeah. That's awesome. (laughs) I know. It was really cool. Well, um, because you have your podcast, like what has it kind of meant to you to be able to chat with just like so many women? Because your podcast just has, you know, everything from like you said, like homemaking and motherhood and, you know, you have some on like your birth stories are on there. Just like, you know, you have so much, but it's just cool. So what has that kind of meant to you to be able to? you know, Thanks. talk with all that, all those women. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think, um, really it's just shown me like the power of testimony, like, mm-hmm. and how much that can build our faith and encourage us in hard times. And, um, I always joke that I'm like pregnant and which I, I am pregnant. <laughs> and so I feel like I cry all the time, oh. which is so funny. Cause yeah, I'm like, why am I crying right now? Oh. Um, But yeah, I think it's, it's true. Like just testimony, um, the power of these women, like being vulnerable and sharing their stories has done so much, honestly, just in my life. Like I'm so blessed every time I get to hear women's stories. And I think what's so funny is most of the time how I like find guests, maybe it'll be like someone who I become friends with kind of on Instagram, or I just think Mm -hmm. their content is so beautiful or they dress their kids so cute or something. And that's kind of what initially like draws me in, right? Like I resonate with their aesthetic or parenting style, whatever, Mm -hmm. something like superficial, right? That's fun, but like not, there's not a lot of depth. And, um, almost every single time it's like, the Lord just reveals to both of us, whether it's like before the podcast or in the middle of it, you know, the depth of their story, maybe they walk through like some extreme suffering or they just like have, yeah, some powerful testimony that is used to encourage me and so many others. So it's like just funny what initially brings us together is like Mm -hmm. beauty and like we like the same coffee or whatever, but the Lord always uses it um, in a bigger way to bring glory and encouragement. And so I find myself thinking back to podcasts that um, I've recorded with women and being like, wow, I remember when she shared that. And like, it's so crazy because that conversation that I had with this person was like over a year ago, but that's still coming to mind and encouraging me today. And so, yeah, I just personally have been blessed. And then it's been so amazing to like share those stories, obviously, with the world, I guess, and to hear like so many messages of, I think one of the most common messages I get is from women who are like um, earlier mid twenties who are like, I just got married and I found out I'm pregnant and we weren't expecting to get pregnant and I was really scared, but then I listened to your podcast and now I'm excited to be a mom or something like that. And I'm just like, Lord, how? Like, man, that's just amazing. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I feel really honored that I get to to do that you know yeah yeah no that's really cool I definitely feel that I mean I'm only seven episodes in but like I on Monday I was listening to um episode five and I was just like wow I like got so much out of it and I was there I like told my mom I'm like it's so crazy you like will go back and listen to it or edit it and you're like wow that's just like so cool and then you hope that it impacts people in the way that it impacted you even though you were literally there (laughs) it's like totally (laughs) yes well it's like different brains like my husband I kind of explained to him like obviously when you're having the conversation there's a level of not performance but you're just like on you know what I'm saying yeah um and you're like engaged and then you're editing and you're just listening for the things that you need to edit out so you're like kind of half there kind of not in a different brain space and then when you go back and listen once it's like fully edited and released yeah like the Lord then is able to bless you again in that conversation so it sounds like you had a similar experience yeah and I love that you just said like the power of testimony because I just love that and being able to talk through people's stories, whatever that looked like and whatever they feel like, you know, they kind of want to share is always just like so cool. And I just leave and I'm like, oh, wow, like that was so fun. And I just look forward to doing it every week. So, yeah, that's so fun. 
I love yeah. that. <laughs> um, well, I said in on the episode that was released today, which was episode six, um, that I'm probably going to ask this every episode, but like, where do you kind of see God the most in your life right now? Oh man, that's such a great question. Um, so we moved to California eight or nine months ago and I'll try to be somewhat brief, but it was like, uh, not an unexpected move, but kind of, we had been in Southern California, um, for me to finish. I, I went to college there and then my husband started grad school. So he finished grad school. And after that season, we moved back to the Midwest to be with family to Kansas. And, um, that was a really sweet season, also a really hard season because we were waiting on all kinds of license things with his job. He's a therapist. Um, and then we had some things fall through with his license and like the legalities of it. And so it's kind of like our plan. It was totally like our plan B to like relocate, but we kind of were in a spot where we needed to take a break from pursuing his therapy licensure and just kind of gain some I guess like stability. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we ended up moving back to California, except like six hours north of where we were. So it wasn't like we were moving back to like this nest of like, oh, our community, like we're back, mm -hmm. like, yay, it's so good to be back. It was yeah. completely different part. Um, and up until I'd say about a month ago, <laughs> I was just bitter, sad, really having a hard time. Like, having a super hard time adjusting to where we moved. There's a lot of different parts of California that are fun and beautiful. And where we live is not, in my opinion, one of them. Or I've just had a hard time like finding um, community. And, you know, we're not in like, I guess the most beautiful part, but it's still really expensive and just like a number of factors that has made it really hard. But um, through prayer and like an amazing mentor who I get to chat with regularly. Um, the Lord just like finally broke through <laughs> because I didn't want to stay in that like bitter, mm -hmm. sad, angry place, but that's just like honestly where I was at. And I feel like it also was totally in conjunction with like hitting my second trimester mm -hmm. and the weather mm -hmm. shifting. And it was like everything hard was at once for like a good three months. And then now I feel like everything good and easy and beautiful has like come at once as well. So it's kind of interesting how those things happen all yeah. at the same time. But um, yeah, I really see the Lord in my life right now, like having helped me, he helped me move into that place of like surrender and acceptance and joy, mm -hmm. even though our circumstances have been challenging and not my favorite. And yeah, he's just really like fathered me through it. I mm. think if that makes sense. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I find like change is hard yeah. for me naturally. <laughs> like, I don't know. I like, it's like, I always kind of think about it. Like when I graduated high school, it was like no biggie. But then like when my husband graduated high school, cause he graduated a year um, after me, it was like, okay, I couldn't like handle it. It was like so weird. So like certain parts of yeah. change just be so hard. And then do you have like family in that area or you said no so we uh we were in southern california before with no family but we had built just a great community there through our church and um through my college so whenever we moved to kansas it was like where we both grew up our whole lives mm -hmm. so even just there was that level of security of like we didn't necessarily have a ton of like high school friends who live there but like we knew people we knew right. Like every time we left the house, we like saw people we knew. Right. Um, and then my parents were there and then all of his family was like a three hour drive away. So just a super familiar place. Um, and so we left all of that to come to where we are now. And my husband actually works at our church. Um, that's what brought us here. So he took a break from pursuing his therapy licensure to go back into vocational ministry. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've never been, he was a youth pastor when we met and were engaged, but we've never been like married full-time vocational ministry together. Mm -hmm. So I think that is like its own thing as well. And I've kind of had to sit in the challenges of like, 
um, like our church has no young families right. and my kids are the only ones at the nursery and just some of those things where it's like, this is our church and our support system, but this is also his job right. and that's messy and the ways and places in which I would generally find support and feel confident because I'm pretty outgoing, like, oh, I'll just like go to a small group or go to a mom's group. Like mm -hmm. the church where we're serving doesn't have any of those things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's been like an added layer of uh, confusion or just hardness, I guess. Right. Yeah. No, that totally yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, we can kind of like jump back a little bit if you don't yeah. mind just talking about kind of like well you got married at 19 so you were in school when you got married yes yeah I um met my husband well I guess you could say that we knew each other growing up he was four years older um but we were never in school at the same time like in the same school at the same time right so like when i was in 8th grade he was a senior which feels right. so funny to right. say <laughs> um so we knew of each other i definitely knew who he was but it was my like freshman year of college when i was home for christmas break and that's when we like quote met and like started okay. dating okay. so when we actually got married it was um I kind of did college and I did got my bachelor's degree in two and a half years. So it's kind of weird. It was like my second year of college. Um, so I guess technically the first semester of my sophomore year, but I actually graduated one year later. So <laughs> yeah, okay. just kind of <laughs> confusing, but yeah, yes. A short answer is yes. I was still in school okay. when we got married. So what did that season kind of look like? Like what made you I mean, you were obviously younger than him, but what did that kind of look like? Yeah, it's interesting because I think like in high school and even before that, I had always been open to like getting married young and I'm an only child, but I always wanted a big family. And so even just like having lots of kids and like homeschooling and things were things that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of the trajectory I was on was more like, I guess, career oriented, my degrees in public relations. Mm. And I actually did beauty pageants in high school, which is pretty funny to me oh. now. <laughs> just a lifetime ago. But just that culture is very much like, I guess, girl boss-esque. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of like on that trajectory. And yeah, then met my husband and was like, wait, like, I love him and he it was helpful that he was out of college and like had been working a job so I had that like I guess level of security where I felt like jumping in um it wasn't like he was also a student it just felt like less I guess financial or logistical things right. to yeah. navigate um which now it's funny like that wouldn't necessarily discourage me from encouraging other people if like right, they're maybe yeah. both 19 or whatever but at the time it's just kind of what I was thinking um and so yeah it was I don't know just kind of a no-brainer we were like we love each other we know like he's older and let's just do it and I had been planning to study abroad in London um in the spring of 2019 and so we like had that in our minds as well and so we were kind of talking through it and originally we were thinking about getting married in like the summer of 2019 but we were like man we're gonna have to like plan a wedding and navigate this like what eight hour ten hour um time difference like we should just get married before and then you can come and so that's what we did we like timed it over my Thanksgiving break, which was so fun. Well, that's fun. <laughs> that's yeah. So it was like a crazy time. It was a blizzard and John got the stomach flu the day of our wedding, but oh, we got married no. and it was oh the best. <laughs> oh my goodness. But it was a little crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's it's cool funny you, now. Yeah. That's cool that you got to go together and kind of have that experience of like or, you know, like early marriage, getting to go yeah. on like a really fun adventure, which is Yeah. Cool. No, it was really special, especially because we got pregnant like eight months into marriage. And I think, um, which we were so excited and it wasn't kind of 
kind of a surprise, kind of not a surprise, but like, I think even just having that like really fun experience of getting to travel abroad to hold on to Mm -hmm. in the moments where we feel like, what were we thinking? We were not prepared. Like we should have had more time or more money or whatever it is. Like we can just appreciate like, but we got to do that together. And that was so special. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so yeah, yeah, that was fun. Well, that was 